I asked myself, what is the best job? And guess what? What I found out was something like this. I found out that I could make a very good scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You're very intelligent for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. But you know what? The salary was really good. For being a scarecrow, they are paying kind of like $8 per hour. But the sun and the position, no, 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 bad idea. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. That's what I thought. And I said, I thought also about the insects. I, was, oh, yeah. I, I thought, what about the mosquitoes? Hmm, no, the mosquitoes is the less. What about the snakes? Because they are uh, fields of crops, you know, like. Yes. No, it's not a good idea. Uh, you know what? I haven't thought about the snakes, but you're right. Uh, no, no, that's not a good idea. All right. Later on, I found out that I could make a very good other judge. You, well, you could. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> it's like a you, 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 you know. Yeah, that's it. Well, another judge is a person who is in charge of testing the effectiveness of some products, some toilet products, for example, deodorants, perfumes, um, soap. So oh. they, they have to smell people to know if the uh, product was effective or not. And of course, they have to be trained people, skilled people, for doing this kind of job. But yes, of course, that's a good skill, but smell the armpit for a strange, <laughs> it's like my dream, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, that's what I thought also. It was not my dream job. No. <laughs> All right. Later on, I found out that I could be a mermaid. Did you like the water and have your skin super wet all the time? Well, uh, I swim very well. I like to be under the water, but not for more than one hour, you know. I think yeah. that, and even for being a mermaid, I could be very fit. And uh, no, I think that if I do this, maybe the people would say, whoa, look, a whale. And so, no. No, of course not. But <laughs> when I was a kid, I I was to to be a mermaid. You know, I I see the movie Splash, of course. Oh and yeah. I, I want to be like that, like a mermaid in the in the bathroom. You know, in the it's it's the top, the Latina. Uh -huh, at the bat. At the bat. The and bat. Of course, in the sea, and and then I saw the La Sirenita de Disney. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and I said, yes, of course, I want to be Ariel now. Wow. But I, the last travel that I did to, to Las Vegas, there were a, a mermaid there in a big aquarium, like a super big aquarium with natural fishes. And she was uh, swimming there with um, some tubes to, to breathe, you know. Not a wow. They ah. have a, only a tooth there, and she do things. And they swim around, and they take the tube and breathe. And oh my! She, she was beautiful, but I thought, imagine that it was a tropical fish uh, aquarium with salt. Oh. Imagine oh. the skin with the salt for six hours or four hours oh my and it was beautiful but I, I saw it like 30 minutes but she works doing that eight hours per day jesus christ no no i can't i say it's beautiful but i couldn't do that of course uh-huh yes you're right you know what mm, yes that's not an option no, oh. it's a location for a teacher, really. And it's, <laughs> not, it's not usual, you know? 
not all the teachers could do that. Well, yes, and you know what? I really love it. This mm. is the job that I have had that I really uh, have appreciated so much. Uh, before this, before being a teacher, I was a, a salesperson, but I couldn't do it well because uh, I was very um, uh, uh, empathetic with people. And whenever they told me, oh, I like it, but you know what? I don't have money for buying it. I, <laughs> I used to say, don't worry, I could make you an, um, a person off so that you can buy it. <laughs> So, so I was not good at sales. Later on, I was a waitress. But uh, no, it was really exhausting. I was yes. standing up for long hours. So no, it was not for me. And moving, you know, and uh, um, I don't know, how do you say cargar? Uh -huh, carrying. Carrying uh, weight things. Uh -huh, heavy things. Heavy things. Then it's not, it's very difficult to be a waitress. Very difficult. Yeah, and you know what? The I think that the worst part of being a waitress was the clients. Oh, it, yeah. There were many uh, rude people, many rude men. Men and women. Uh -huh. I don't understand why the people can be kind, you know? If you mm -hmm. ask the, the things um, with education, you know, politely, uh -huh. people get more things that if you are rude, but people don't yes. understand that. But you know what I saw there? Of mm. course, there were many people who complained about the service, uh, who were mad about the waitresses, the waiters, but what I could see is that when they complain, when the, the customers complain about the service and the waitress and the waiters were preached by the, the principal there, they were angry. And so what they used to do was to, uh, to spill, uh, no, to spit into the dishes they were going to serve so yes. <laughs> yeah it's not good. that's what i learned whenever you go to a restaurant never complain about the service before <laughs> you eat yes no, it's not a good idea but it's not good uh, that the, that the waitress or the person in the restaurants be like that you know it's like uh, why you do that it's disgusting too much and so i think that it is necessary that we are empathetic one each other and so if we have any complaint why not to ask directly to the person and say you know what you could uh, improve your work with this observation no so you shouldn't do this but I don't know, persons feel, well, when you talk with persons about that, they feel like attacked, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, it's the same way in the, in, when some people are auditing you. I don't know how you say, uh -huh. audita. Uh -huh. Audit. Audit, audit you in the, in, in the company or in the government. And all the people who receive the auditor feel like attacked. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, I think it's good because people told you uh, what <laughs> things are you doing good and, or bad and you can uh -huh. improve yourself and do better. That's it. But it's not a regular thought about that. Yeah, I think that that's the way we can have quality. But you're right. Many people don't consider that it's a help that they are having because they can improve. But yes, as you said. All the, all the people thought that they are perfect, you know. I'm doing this okay. And that's the only way. Yeah. I, think, I suppose that. I don't know. You know what? I think that 
that kind of thought, that thinking that we are perfect, is what makes us to be far, very far away from quality. Hmm. But yes, yes, but not not a lot of people think that it's a help that we receive whenever somebody check or work up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's not like a. Yeah. For you... them, it's like if if the people attack him, you know. Mm -hmm. I told you that you are not okay with the job or doing okay, and they feel attacked. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know what? When I when I was, uh, when I started working here at Ilse, I started working as a grammar teacher, as a web teacher, just. And I remember that every single class I had, there was a supervisor among my students. And so at first I was nervous because I didn't know how to manage the platform. And I was not very used to be speaking to my computer. And so I was very nervous about it. But by the time they were helping me to a, to to get used to it and they also made some observations to me they told me Maggie you know a, you could do it in a better way so try to do this and they gave me a piece of advice and it was very valuable for me and so nowadays when I see a supervisor in my class I feel better I feel safe because I know that if I commit any mistake or if I uh, have something that I could improve, they are going to tell it to me. So it is good. I really like it. Hmm. Because you are a evolved person, you know, but the 99% the of the person is like, no, no supervisor for me. Uh -huh. they, uh, yes, you're right. They feel attacked. Mm -hmm. and, but anyway, yes, not all the people think about it like a help. All right. Well, <clears throat> you know what? I was thinking also about the, these of mer being a mermaid, but yes, you're right. It's not a good business. But what about being a professional snuggler? It's like, like, um, let me see, um, snuggler. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is a snuggler. A uh, snuggler is a person who cuddles you, who cherishes you, and to hug you when you need it, when you are in depression. <laughs> what a nice job! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Because you you have to talk to people who are in depression, and so you have to help them make. Uh, well, to make help, not to make them feel better, to help them feel better. If they need a hug, you have to give them. If you need a kiss, you have to kiss the person. If you need a, 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 a cuddle, a path, a cherish, you have to do it. <coughs> so that people can feel much better. Oh, well, that's a, a good job, but I think it's difficult. Because I don't feel um, that I could uh, hug a, a super stranger people, you know? Like, uh, I don't know him for nothing. It's not my friend or my partner, nothing. And I need to hug them or hug him. It's like a difficult for me. Uh -huh. But it's a good job. If you could, it's great. And you do a social service too. Yes, that's it. It's a very interesting and very important job. But yes, you have to be a trained person, a skilled person, because mm -hmm. not everybody can do that. I wouldn't do it or even. I could listen to people. I could give piece of advice. But hawk people or cherish people? Mm, no, yeah. I don't. It, it's difficult to me, for example, hawk a stranger, you know. I, I can't take the hand and hold him tranquilo, be careful, yeah. I don't know, silence or 
you will you will be okay but hug or cuddle it's like it mm -hmm. seems impossible to me but maybe there are persons that they could do that uh -huh, it may be but yes uh, for me it was not an option mm -mm. For I, me. Mm, no maybe something different but well i found out this one a bright kidnapping expert <laughs> that sounds fun <laughs> yeah too much but guess what <clears throat> i thought that this was a joke i said it's not possible that something like that could happen and of course it is illegal it's a kidnap anyway yeah but guess what that no. It's like a joke or it's like for true, oh, you know, yeah. I want to marry it with her, but the family doesn't want and I kidnap her yeah. for real. Yeah, for real. And, even, and even she doesn't love me, but I don't care, kidnap her, I want to marry her and they do it. Wow. Yeah. What? Super illegal. Yeah, and that's it's terrible it. for the bride, it's terrible. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I found out that there are certain countries where this is totally legal. For example, in Kazakhstan, in Kurdistan, and um, Pakistan. That's terrible because they don't uh, take in count the, the thoughts of the bride, you know? Yeah, that's like, it. If she will be an animal or something like that, that I can take. I it's that. Fine and that's it. Ah, that's it. That's what I thought. I said, oh my goodness. I couldn't figure out that something like that could happen in our civilized and modern world. It's like a super amazing in the bad way, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. why? It is awful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the, the word thing in, in the gender aspect, you know, that the yeah. woman yes, uh, will be treated like no person, no conscious. Uh -huh, that's They're it. mine and that's it and te jodes. I don't know how do you say that in English, but mm, you know my, my, my mind, you know? Yeah, that's it. And so, you know what? Um... As a, as the same as you, I thought that it was a joke. So I was looking for the for the, the funny part, but I couldn't find it. And I found out that it's real in some countries. But well, anyway, well, of course, it is not an option. It was just oh, like a, a comment. No, no, of course. I know it's like an example, you know, <laughs> like, like a... Interesting example. It's good to know that they're kind of job. Yeah, like like guess what? Look at this. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. And well, later on, I found out that I could be a, a writer, of course. I like oh. or a wizard, like <laughs> a writer, uh, or a mall Santa. That's uh, that's not my choice, of course. I would like to be a mall Santa. <laughs> <laughs> or a Rasputin impersonator. Well, you need a good beer, Barba? A good beer. A half beer. Beer. And I don't think it's your case. No, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> But be a writer or wizard is like fun, you know, because a modern wizard is like, okay, you can study for plants or something like that. And it could be interesting. Yeah, that's it. A Monsanto is like the, cher um, like the cherry in the cake, you know, like, well, I have a good bird, bird. Uh -huh. Big bird. bird, and I can do that, but it's like a, just because I have, I could. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But well, 
that was something that I thought. But no, not to be a mole Santa or Rasputin <laughs> impersonator. But no, Rasputin was a bad. Uh, I don't like the, the personality of Rasputin. Uh huh. He was a bad man. It was a super, super bad. You know, like a, how do you say in English, um, trepador? Uh, he was a swindler. Swindler. He was a swindler. I suppose that, but you know, we need to to be there uh, be, for good um, judge the situation. Mm -hmm, that's it. Yes, you're right. But uh, I don't know. Well, maybe we could be impersonator for anyone else. For yeah. Elvis Presley or... No, no, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Maybe Cleopatra, that's good. That's oh, all right. right. Or for Marilyn Monroe. Well, not my case, but could be. <laughs> Uh, oh, right. Moro have a good shape and I am a little fat a little bit then it's not my type you know well um, then I could be the impersonator for Sara Garcia <laughs> very nice granny <laughs> yeah but she was a good actress too too much and guess what I found out that for a working in her personage she went to the dentist and she asked the dentist to take out all of her teeth. Really? Yeah, so that she could make a good granny, a good granny character. But then she, she was younger than they seen in the, in the picture in Chocolate Abuelita, you know? Yeah, that's it. She was so younger. Really? I didn't know. Yeah, neither did I, but when I saw her uh, biography, I said, oh, my goodness. Yes, of course, that is like a, to, to, to have the extreme actions to do your job okay, you know? Aha, uh -huh, something like, did you see the movie picture uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? No, yet. It's good. Uh, well, I didn't like it very much because maybe I was uh, expecting to listen to more uh, music. And so yeah. it was kind of like a biography. But, well, no, I didn't like it very much. Of course, many people were very, um, uh, they were very happy with the, the history. But, well, in, in my case, I didn't like it very much. But what I wanted to refer was about the actor, the starring for the mm. picture. And he also had to make many things like losing weight, like changing his uh, teeth and uh, changing his, uh, the color of his hair, dyeing his hair, mm. to be the perfect character for Freddie Mercury. And of course, yeah. he had to learn, really learn, study and learn the movements that Freddie Mercury had in any of his concerts, the way he looked, the way he moved. And so I think that it was a very a good, a very good character he made. So it was, it worked well for him for the actor, the principal character, the starring. Mm -hmm. So if you see the movie picture, you can uh, appreciate the very good work that the actor did. Mm. But I think well, Freddie Mercury, it's emblematic, you know, it's like a mm, very difficult character because a lot of people love him a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like uh, it, it could be very difficult to to act like him. Well, I don't know. I read that Freddie Mercury had a um, teeth condition that they have um, more teeth like the usual, 
and he he speaks a little with not with accent um like a little bit dif different you know for the uh -huh. extra teeth that, that he had and i don't know try to to do his voice it could be impossible he had a very beautiful voice very potent you know like amazing uh -huh. But you know what? I think that it was the impossible part of the of the movie picture. So they used the same uh, soundtracks, the original soundtracks of the concerts, because it was something that they couldn't get. Uh, not not like Freddie. No, never. I, I I really like Freddie Mercury. I don't know nothing about music. But his voice, it's unique. For me, it's unique. Yeah, so I like him very much. And you know what? There are many songs that for me were masterpieces. For example, um, um, oh my, what's the name of this? Killer Queen. Mm. Killer Queen, for me, is a masterpiece. It's a very beautiful song. He had a lot of good songs, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up with uh, We Are The Champions. I don't know it's the name, but you know. Ah, that's yes, it. that's it. And it's like super um, powerful music, super powerful lyric. It's like, wow. And Rhapsody, bo Bohem or Bohem? Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. It's a masterpiece because they had a lot of types of music, you know, had like an opera and rock. Uh, it's like a mix, very well done mix. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is not only about the composition, but also the performance. It was yeah. a so mastery. Did, did you see Freddie Mercury sing with Maria Callas for the Barcelona Olympic Games? No. 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 Check it on YouTube. It's amazing. It's not the best work of Freddie Mercury, but it's very interesting to to hear it because you could um, hear the the power of the voice of Maria Cala, like it's a opera singer. Yeah. And then the style of Freddie Mercury, it's a little, it's interesting, a little shocking for me the, the first time that I heard it, but it's very interesting. I will check it up. Thank you very much for the recommendation. It's like interesting if you, because you know about music, you know, you have the, the, the feeling or the knowledge and oh, it's interesting. Yeah, I will check it up. It will be really interesting. And it's in YouTube. It's like free. Aha, uh -huh. I will check it up. Wow. Yeah, well, later on, talking up again about the jobs. Mm. But I thought that, uh, no, I wouldn't like to be an impersonator of anyone. But later on, I found out that I could work as a snake milker. Do you like snakes? No, <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> of snakes. They are beautiful too. Oh, um, I, they they are very mythological animals. They are very powerful animals. But oh. I'm, I'm a chicken, you know. I am a scaredy cat. <laughs> well, it's normal. I I really love it, but I don't know how to manage them you know with uh -huh. say, with say for me and for the animal of course yeah yeah because uh, they have to be dealt in a special way so that they the, the yes so that you can be safe of course and so that they can be in their uh, in their best state i guess because they, they are very strong animals. But, yes, it is necessary to know how to to handle them. Yeah. Instead, I think it's a, one of 
what one kind of animal that you could lose your life if you don't manage well the animal? Mm, yes, that's it. I totally agree with you. And, well, talking about the job of being a snake milker, mm. I think that, well, the payment is really, really good, but it's extremely dangerous, so risky. Well, I don't know if it's too risky because you do a super high risky job being a teacher from kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's not like a big deal, you know. Oh, yeah. And you know what? It, to deal with parents because <laughs> you can negotiate with children. You can say, okay, if you behave well, I will give you a stamp. Or I will, I will give you the, the, the puppet that I brought to all the classroom so that you take it home. Or I will give you a little star, something like that. But yeah. whenever you are talking to parents, oh, that's difficult. Because um, sometimes they feel like you as a teacher attack their children. And of course, it is not true. We would never attack a child. But they say, yes, you preached my child. And now he doesn't want to be at your class. Oh, my. Or they say, my baby wanted to have a little star. But you said that he wouldn't have it because he was standing up. And I said, all right. So didn't you see, well, <coughs> that your boy uh, pushed a girl and she fell down? So, of course, we shouldn't uh, give a prize for this behavior. But yeah. sometimes parents don't understand it. I remember. Yeah. Yes. It's difficult because parents want, like, um, advantage for their kids, you know? Aha, uh -huh, that's it. I remember when my children were at the kindergarten. Jesus, I, re I remember... Seeing the teacher, uh, not fighting, of course, because they have to be very polite, but giving explanation to the mothers, and they needed to start their classes, and the mommy didn't want to go because she was complaining about something. And, well, I think that for me, it would be something like the most difficult part to manage. Yes. Parents are very difficult and they don't understand. But there are two bad teachers, you know. I want to, well, I like to say that the parents are like, uh, I don't know, inhuman persons, like no reason person, because they want to, to um, care their kids. Mm -hmm. But there are, it, it's sadly to say, but there are bad teachers too. Yes, they are. Yeah. Then it's difficult. It's a, a very difficult, um, how do you say, equilibrium? Equilibrium. Equilibrium between you are a parent and you want to care your baby, of course, but you need to recognize that the teacher had a hard job too and they need to do it. Uh -huh, that's it. Yes, that's kind of a difficult task, but I hope that I will do it fine. Yeah, because you have a vocation. In your case, specifically, I think yeah, that you are great and you will be great with kids. Oh, thank you very much. I will try to do my best. In indeed, I like very much to work with children. Uh, I have worked with with them in some occasions because this is not the first time that I work in a kindergarten. Mm. In, in 15, 2015, I was mm -hmm. working in a private kindergarten. Mm. Uh, but I had to leave because um, the government in Mexico gave me a scholarship in Indiana in the University of Southern Indiana. So I had to 
of course, it was a very good opportunity for me. Of course. <laughs> so I took it and I went to the United States. And when I came back, of course, they had already found another another teacher because they yeah. needed to to give the attention to children. Yes, of course. Well, no job, uh, wait for for one person. <laughs> the yeah. rule. You know. <clears throat> yeah, so next Monday. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Well, talking again about the, um, the jobs, mm -hmm. guess what I could find also? That I could be a boner. Oh, I was wondering what is boner? Ah, boner is a person, a professional, who is in charge of helping the bull to be ready for the husbandry with the cow. So, oh, uh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, I get that. Okay, uh, so yeah, I yeah. have to, well, you have to convince the bull that it's the moment. Well, I well, I know a little about that because I studied veterinary, then we have a, a class or a lesson about reproduction, uh -huh. and yeah, I get that it's not a good job. <laughs> I oh? told you. It's Why? Not <laughs> it's very I difficult. It. <laughs> is it the risk? Is it risky? Is it dangerous? Yes, yes it is because a bull uh, weighs around uh, fourteen kilos or more, and when he feels uh, ready for go to the cow, for example, uh, for the husbandry. Exactly, it's very difficult to manage because they need a, a, a very big rush. My goodness! And they could hit you for go there. Mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's what I thought that it could be violent. Yes, and I think it's um, it's not just to to. To have a happy ending, I don't know how do you say in polite <laughs> form. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, okay. It's not just about that because in some cases you only need to to use the sperm, but the bull never go with the cow. Never. Oh my! So it is. I think that um, it is very difficult to content the bull because of. They, no, they have like a mannequin, you know, for like a cow form for do that. Uh -huh. um, it, it, I think it could be very frustrating for the bull, you know. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Oh, that's unfair. Uh, well, I, I, I think so, but it's a very difficult job too. You have to do a uh, no. The um, uh, let me let me try to remember the word. Um, I don't I don't remember the comportamiento. Behavior. Ah, oh, behavior. Thank you. You My need question. to know. I uh, have a good knowledge about the bull's behavior and the cow's behavior for do a good job without risk. My goodness, yes, yes, you're right. That's what I thought. And as far as we can see in here, the payment is very good. They are eight pounds to eight fifty per hour. And so I think that it is because of the risk and the expertise that they have to have. Mm -hmm. mm, so it is not something easy. No, it's not. Wow. Not at all. Not not of all. No. I, I can't I don't know what happened to me. I can speak normally in English. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe you know what? I think that it can also be the time because uh, for you it is really early in the morning. So 
we don't uh, work the same as we were in an appropriate hour. Well, it could be. <coughs> so that's a very big effort you do. And, well, be, because, well, I need English, of course, but you worth it. Your class is very good. I really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what? It, what you said was something that I really needed because I have been working with this presentation. And of course, I was uh, investigating, I was making research about what are the characteristics, the salary of all of the, the jobs that I am presenting. But I, I haven't talked to any person who was an authority about, about veterinary, like you are, uh, to know about this, I, I said what I investigated, but now what you have told me is going to be very useful for me to manage this, this class, this presentation, uh, because yes, everybody asks me, teacher, what is it? What does uh, Bonner mean? Mm, Bonner means this, but I, I thought that it could be the information, but I was not sure. Well, it's a difficult job, but I'm pleased that I can help you for Yeah, this. too much. Too much because even for me, it was something like, what? Is it real? Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's a very difficult job, super oh. difficult job. Yeah, that's I, that's what I thought. And later on, when I saw here that they said industrial, I said, ah, now I understand what they use. So it is used for helping the bull and cow to produce not only cows, but also milk. Yes. In that case, well, I can read very well. But I suppose it's for the artificial insem insemination, you know? Ah, uh, yes, that's And it. they sold the, I don't know, it, it calls semen in English too. Aha, uh -huh, the semen. Mm -hmm. And they sell it, not the pool, all the semen. Um, uh, for cosmetics, maybe? No, 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 for... Uh, for insemination. For insemination for the, the cows, but in other countries or in other places that they don't have bulls. Because have a bull, it's a very expensive situation because the bull don't give you nothing. You know, it's like a, they eat, they uh, have a space, but they give you nothing. It, the cows give you milk. And um, calf, it's the calf, and you can uh, the the cow could be pregnant and etc. You know, you they have uh, some products for you for seal uh -huh. for sale, but the bull is like a super high inversion for a, a farm. Uh, that's it, and just for being a stallion, exactly. Ah, look at this. Hey, that's great. You bought the, the semen and you go use in the in your cows, but you don't have to pay for for the food for the stallion. Aha, uh -huh, to for for affording the expenses of exactly. the stallion. Oh my wow. Hey, that was super interesting and super useful. Thank you very much. No, my pleasure. That's a, a very interesting, uh, you know, topic. Ah, uh, that's it. And uh, I was really lucky that that you are a veterinarian and you could explain it to me. <laughs> now well, I, can, I can give the information as it is. Oh, well, thank you. It's my pleasure, really. I really love talk about these topics. Because I understand better than be a wizard, for example, or a snowman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Well, Sandy, 
I thank you very much for your help, for your participation, of course, and for your attention and attendance. So thank you. I really thank you. And well, have a very good night. And oh, I, I have a question. Sorry. Oh, yes. yes, tell me. This Sunday, did, is it a Sunday when you take do other class with ah, yes. Is it possible that I try to catch you in that class too? Yes, of course you can be in the class also. Yes. Oh, perfect. I try it. I'm really try it. All because right. I want to, to continue talking because I feel like I'm improved now uh, if I compare to the when I start with Ilse, I feel better now. Wow. More That's really nice. I really love it. Congratulations to you. You know what? I think that, uh, well, this is a very useful tool because you have to use everything that you have learned. And uh, that is something that many courses don't have, the human part of being in a conversation. So if, if it has been useful for you, of course, it is, it is for you. So, yes, of course. Thank I, you very much. What, what time is it? It's, it is at 7, no, 8 o'clock in the time Eight. of Mexico. Perfect. Perfect. I try to catch you then. Okay, excellent. So uh, I wait for you and meet you next Sunday. See you. Thank you. Have a nice day and thank you for the class. It was very interesting. Thanks to you. Have a very good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Good night. Well, good day. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See you. See you.